Denmark and to Sledesheim and to our symposium here for the next two days. We, we call it Coastal Cultures in Times of Change and I'll say a little bit of times of change first. In, in, a, natural, in a natural perspective the crisis is a, is a resource crisis. It's the depletion of fish stocks, it's the fishing down of fish populations. The nature resource crisis is both a natural crisis, but also a management crisis. I think that's important that it's a management crisis as well. Most coastal areas in Europe are also rural in the way that they are suffering from um, depopulation. So this is the, the rural downward spiral. It kind of service gets worse, people move away, and then service gets even worse, etc. Uh, we are living in uh, a f uh, fishing, little fishing village uh, called Torpstrand, and where many other places have disappeared, this place have um, increased its um, it number of boats and, and, and fishermen and income and economy. But it was hit when the Danish government introduced ITQs. Um, the area where we are just now, uh, this is uh, Skagerrak, and Skagerrak uh, is a specific um, uh, area for fishing grounds because we have this deep slope uh, between Norway and uh, Denmark, the Norwegian uh, slope. This is uh, Torpstrand, uh, the, the fishing community. All of this is owned by all of the fishers of Torpstrand. It's only here because of them. See if we can open. I think we can. The interesting thing about it is that there are many young people. Um, it is a very old, a thousand year old place where the people have been living from fishery and seafaring. Um, and today it's a very dynamic uh, place. And the boats they come in at afternoon and they call out and say I have like 20 boxes of, of place and then we just call all, all of the youngsters and they go down here and they clean fish. For how many hours? Until they're done. Okay. Yes, we, I cannot understand how do you deploy the, the, the troll with... They, they are not fishing with troll, they are fishing with the Danish seine and with the gillnet. Ah, okay. Danish seine and gillnet. It is a kind of fishery where if you are delivering e-fish, a high quality fish, then uh, it is compatible uh, on the European market. And it's closely connected to the market uh, via uh, roads. We were only three girls who went to high school. And one of them moved to Copenhagen and I moved to Aarhus and the other one stayed here and is fishing with her dad now so I think everyone wants to come back at some point. It's not like young people are moving away. That's not, that's not the issue here. Then when people come and say, oh we need to, we need to save this because it's, it's a culture and heritage and yeah. we need to go down and watch this. So like no, 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 this is our fishery, it's a, it's a real job. Don't exactly. see us like a museum. Yeah, yeah, We're not yeah, a museum, yeah. no, we don't want you to see us. We don't want funds to help us, because we can manage, but they, they just can't. Uh, you have to, to protect uh, the different kind of fisheries against each other, and sometimes also the um, populations of fish and the environment. And this has been done the last thousand years.
this this hopper has measured in cot quota the most important uh, demersal quota has almost doubled its size since the introduction of itq but if you count the number of boats it hasn't doubled the uh, fully fledged um, uh, fisheries management act was was uh, was uh, put into law in 1990 with the introduction of the uh, individual transferable quota system. Which is what? ITQs, the oh, privatization yeah. of the quotas. Well, one of the, and that's of course what the, the, uh, the uh, ITQ system is supposed to do. It's supposed to, uh, to uh, slowly but surely move the uh, catching rights or fishing rights into the hands of those more capable or more, more efficient in, in a certain sense of the economics, resource economics of fishing. Um, this also means that uh, fishing villages such as the one I've studied on the north coast of Iceland, Husavik, uh, that there are winners and losers, uh, in that case uh, mostly losers. Uh, the quotas moved away, people became there, were less, there was less flexibility in terms of employment, uh, so people started to look for other opportunities. But I want to <coughs> finish by just mentioning the little thing we had in Iceland, which was the total collapse of our economic and social, social uh, arrangement uh, in, two, in the autumn of 2008. The interesting thing that this is a direct link between uh, the ITQ system and the, uh, the Icelandic uh, Viking banking invasion uh, abroad. Because as several economists arguing for the ITQ system before the collapse pointed out in several publications and public meetings, etc., the ITQ system was necessary. It was a key element in financing the, uh, uh, the uh, Icelandic bankers' activities abroad because of the mortgage, because of the collaterals that uh, the fishing rights made available. Uh, so uh, there's a clear link between the ITQ system, introduction of the, of the property rights that the, what they call the, this lazy lazy resource became active in international markets and as, a, as, a, as an asset, as an economic asset and, and a guarantee and, uh, and a collateral. Uh, now interestingly enough, the, these economists are, have been completely silent uh, about this aspect of the ITQ system uh, after the collapse. This is part of the social discourse on the legitimacy and the justice and the equity and uh, externalities of this form of management. It all links. So now we have small communities in enormous debt. Uh, uh, the fishermen or the fishing families um, discussed how do we manage this situation? because investors um, very fast began to buy up uh, quotas from, from uh, the smaller boats. And in Hanstown, they even began to board up before the new regulation or the new law was, um, was uh, decided. Um, so uh, from 2006, to the crisis in 2008, uh, the value of a boat with a quota increased 1,000%, 10, 10 times. So uh, when you have bought a boat in the uh, beginning, um, you got a, an enormous profit if you sold it in 2008. And because of that, um, huge amount of uh, investment capital or hedge, hedge capital were drawn into the fishery. It was the end of the good period and the beginning of the crisis. 
Yeah? Yeah. So they were very unlucky to get involved in a critical period. Yes, but it's in the wrong. question that there was no crisis. Mm. And they went forward the way they have shared it. Should everybody be happy with this experiment or no? Suppose that everything was mm. not affected by the crisis. Yeah. Was that a good? Uh, mm. And they went forward the way they practiced. It was a good perspective for this. Uh. Fishermen couldn't transform what they saw as the resource to a value paper. They couldn't think this uh, transformation into their own practice. But these investors uh, at Kingfisher, uh, for instance, they saw it very fast. Um, it had bought uh, 15 smaller boats, a quota from 15 smaller boats. Um, and um, uh, the, the, the investors um, decided not to have a crew of share fishermen, but uh, wage workers. Um, and uh, they found some um, uh, cheap ones in Poland. In Denmark, the, um, the quota at the boat was linked together, so you had to buy a boat to get the quota. And in the, in the first period, we had a lot of quota boats, boats that were just there waiting for scrapping, because you had to keep them for two years to then transfer the quota to your own boat. The immaterial rights of this boat constitutes 87% of the value it was put for sale. There's actually only, only uh, one like, small boat left. We saw, it, uh, we saw it in the fall and they just stopped fishing from it. There used to be hundreds of them in the harbor. They used to fill up a whole harbor. How do you create room for the entry of uh the young generation of fishery. Uh. Well, the, the, uh, the, the answer that the, uh, the advocates, especially economists who advocate for this system, is that basically there is no room uh, unless, and, and those who do not have capital to buy into the system, they have no reason to be there. It's as simple as that. I think in those countries where you haven't yet ITQs, you have the possibility to learn of the experiences in our countries.